Ladies and gentlemen, so hard to find. we got him. So, as I'm sure you're aware, within a couple of weeks, the Rings of Power is due to release, and it's going to be the greatest thing to bless our televisions for a long time. A long time. It's going to be so good. I am so I'm genuine. I am so excited for this show to come out for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a fucking shit show. <laughs> anyway, think of the memes, people. Think of the memes. Jeff Bezos has kindly paid 1.5 billion to give us some memes. Thank you, Jeff. You bald, tyrannical overlord. You've finally done something half decent. You've paid the GDP of a tiny country just to give us some memes. <laughs> it's gonna be so good. I am here to offer you nothing new. No new information. No insight into anything that you didn't already know. You're here simply to watch one more person lampoon this garbage pile that is called the Rings of Power. So, Jeff Bezos, aka Jeff Pesos, has paid one billion to acquire the rights to the Lord of the Rings. More specifically, the Fellowship, the Two Towers, Return of the King, the Appendices, and the Hobbit. Now, that doesn't include how much it cost to actually make the first season of the Ring, Rings of Power. I believe that was, was it what, like five, it, it was between four and five hundred million for the first uh, season. So he's already a billion and a half in. My sorrow for the showrunners is about, it's about, it's about as genuine as the, the so-called super fans. If like Sauron is hot, I feel like people will be like, I can fix him. Wow. So as I'm sure a lot of you know, yes, the Rings of Power is due to release in a couple of weeks. The 2nd of September, to be precise. They, now, obviously, I, I can't speak on behalf of Tolkien, but this is, it's possibly the most insulting day you could possibly release the show on. You genuinely couldn't have found a more insulting day. It, it, they, they are actually trying to troll us at this point. Because if you don't know, I'm sure most of you do, the 2nd of September is the day that Tolkien died. He died on the 2nd of September, I think 49 years ago now. Celebrate your birthday, sure. But I mean, obviously, Tolkien's birthday was earlier on this year. They wouldn't have been able to uh, get the show out in time. But, like a lot of people have pointed out already, they could have waited just a couple of weeks and released it on Hobbit Day. Everyone's happy. It seems like uh, even though Hobbits aren't supposed to be in the show because they didn't exist at that time, but they're half foots. Oh, well, why, do you, why, why, why do you say that? Oh, they're half, oh, I get it, okay. They, they still a Hobbit! God damn it. So they ghosted Peter Jackson. They got rid of Tom Shippey, possibly the greatest living authority on anything Tolkien. And what's next? You're gonna, you're gonna strap John Howe to one of Jeff Bezos' rockets and send him into the stratosphere just so no one has to worry about seeing a beautiful depiction of one of Tolkien's writings anymore. Is that it? What's, how far does this go? Everyone who could have made this better is no longer a part of the project. I think the main problem a lot of people have with the show is the showrunners specifically. The slightly inexperienced showrunners, shall we say, that I've got about one credit to my name and it's Star Trek Beyond showrunners that I helped write that one forgettable movie where the rock's in the jungle showrunners. No, no, not that one. Not that one. Nope. Not that one either. Not that one. Ah, that's the one. Of course, I'm talking about J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, who frankly look like members of a washed up Swedish pop rock band. So, when Jeff Bezos said, bring me Game of Thrones, these pair of knuckleheads thought, oh well, I guess we'll become the new Dumber and Dumber and help to further plow any kind of respected franchise into the ground. These guys are either Tolkien fans and they started reading the books last week or they're not Tolkien fans because anyone who was wouldn't look at the works of Tolkien and think, oh yeah, no, this, this is great and all, but I think I could spice it up a little bit. Hmm. Hey. Hey, showrunner number two. Yeah, showrunner number one. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was just writing some notes for this season, and you see, Tolkien mentioned something about, about Numenor. 
Yeah, yeah, I don't really know what that is. So, so I replaced it with with Dumbledore. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, th I think I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, thank. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. Hey, hey, is that the uh, is that the menu from uh, for the for the Chinese place down the road? Ha! Oh yeah, there it is. Ha! How about that? So they've already shown a blatant disregard for any kind of source material. Are there no meetings going on at Amazon? Is Jeff not sat across the room saying, Boys, I paid a billion to acquire the rights to these films and books. What do you mean you're not abiding by the source material? Lots of people saw Tolkien as the last bastion, one of the final untainted franchises. They saw what happened to Marvel and DC Comics. They saw what happened to Marvel Films. They saw what happened to Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, Peppa Pig. Okay, not Peppa Pig, but you know what I mean. It's only a matter of time. Oh, when are we gonna get more pigs of colour in Peppa Pig? It's, they're all pigs! They're all pink because they're pigs! Pigs are all pink! Wait. Wait, you can get different colour pigs. Cancel Peppa Pig immediately. But anyway, everyone's been seeing their beloved franchises falling around them like dead flies, and there stood one beacon of light in the darkness, and along came Gollum and he had to have it all for himself. Thanks, Jeff. Right, let's talk about Deezer. No, not the, uh, not the music streaming platform used by literally tens of people worldwide. No, something even more irrelevant than that. We're of course talking about the first dwarf of colour, <laughs> aka Sophia Nombet, aka Wonky Sandra, aka I would have had a beard, but I smoked it instead, and now I'm seeing shit. Because she's a glaring example of why so many fans are really concerned about what is about to come out. Because I don't know if you've seen any of the multiple interviews the cast have done, None of them seem to be talking about the show. Like, I get it. Lots of them are under NDA. They can't actually talk about the ins and outs of the show. But like, tell me about, you know, what it was like working with maybe your castmates or what, what was it like portraying this character? What was it like being part of something Tolkien? A dream so many people have. What's that like? But instead, all she talks about is, is why this is such a special moment for her as a person. She just wants to sit there and lie to me about how she's the first female dwarf. Can someone please translate what she is saying? She says a whole lot and says absolutely nothing. What is she actually talking about? It is so time for us to expand um, the accessibility and the opportunity for, for, for this world, Tolkien's world. This is necessary. This is a revolutionary moment for cinematic and, uh, and television. It's time for so many people who may have not seen themselves staring right back at them on a screen to have that chance and to have that turn. Suddenly we're being put in a position where um, we are able to move forward, you know, um, and we are seen and we are heard and we are acknowledged as, as of having a right to be here. If I can be the kind of poster child for that revolution, for, for this work and this franchise, then I'll take that. And the thing is, this is not a gender thing. This is not a race thing. It's nothing to do, this is a dumb thing. This is what this is. If, if, if there is such a term for someone who is prejudiced against someone who is a dumb who just wastes people's times, then yes, I'm whatever that is, I'm whatever that is. I'll tell you what, the reverse marketing campaign these guys have managed to pull off is remarkable. They have managed to drive out anyone who would, is remotely interested in Tolkien. I, I just, I don't get the target audience now. Who is it? Because you've done, like I say, They've done a brilliant job of pushing out all the Tolkien fans. So the show is aimed at people who like fantasy, but don't like Tolkien. That's a, that's a weird little niche you've carved out for yourself there. That's a, that's a, that's a funny little slice of pie you, you've got. I'm, I'm interested to see how that works out. Like I said earlier, don't get it twisted. When, when you get all these millions of viewers on your first episode, don't think they're all there adoring you know, whatever it is that you've made. We're there for the memes. We're there because we want to see the Titanic sink. That's why we're here. And look, I, I can forgive 
the cast for not knowing everything about Tolkien, for not being super fan. After all, it's it's not their job to be super fans. It's their job to turn up and act. But th these cast members are they're so insufferable. They're part of this group of people who have managed to ruin intrinsically good things. They've managed to completely reverse them. Like things like woke, progressive, activist. Th these things used to be good things pushed by good people. Now they're insults. If so, if you're if you're labelled as like an act a woke activist, that's an insult and quite and a bad one. You don't want that's something you don't want to be because <laughs> it because basically what that means is it means I subtracted all entertainment personality anything likable and I I re transplanted it with something completely irrelevant and insufferable that no one asked for. This is democracy manifest. What is the charge? Eating a meal? A succulent Chinese meal? Get your hands off my penis! The narcissism is unsurprising, to be honest. I, I'm, I'm, I was, I was going to try and dr dramatise it. No, it, it, it didn't surprise me in the slightest. It's a bunch of narcissists who know nothing about Lord of the Rings acting out a script written by two people who once w were described what Tolkien looked like over the phone. That's all they know. <laughs> That's all they got. Now, I do feel somewhat bad for some people working on the show because they will have been working above and beyond, and you know they will, particularly people like wardrobe uh, and special effects and practical effects. They will have just, uh, like, as always, they'll, they'll have just been going above and beyond. Like, imagine, right? You you work in uh, you know you work in practical effects or you work in wardrobe and you find out that you're going to be working on the new Lord of the Rings project. Like after seeing what Weta Workshop did with the original trip, like you'll never see films like that ever again. Ever. I'm I'm very confident you will never see uh, that much uh, passion and detail go into a film ever again. What Weta did with those films was unreal. But imagine you get to pick the pick up the baton from them and keep running and you get this opportunity and you're stuck with two captains driving you straight towards an iceberg. Like like I say, I, I feel sorry for them, but that is where my sympathy ends for this show. Will you be there? Will you be there for the release? Because the memes are gonna be spectacular. Uh, I can't, I mean, obviously, the Lord of the Rings subreddit can fuck off. You have to spoil the fun for everyone, but regardless, they can't stop the memes. No one can stop the memes. Not even the Eye of Sauron, a.k.a. Jeff Pesos, a.k.a. Bald Overlord. He can't stop them. And he paid a billion for them. He paid a billion for the memes. Uh, yeah, stick around for the next video if you'd like to see a bit more. Uh, thank you for watching this far. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, take care, guys. Jeff paid a billion for the memes. Jeff paid a billion for the memes. Jeff paid a billion, Jeff paid a billion, Jeff paid a billion for the me.